Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we're going to be doing the seventh part of what a Deku or the stat leveling quirk. And I've been much more on it recently, I'm currently scripting the last part to this series. Well not exactly the last part, but the last part before I move on to my next what if, which is going to be what if Naruto was a Fox Age remastered. It's been absolutely amazing scripting this, I never actually thought this what if could be this fun to make. I just want to thank you again for all the support on this what if, it's been amazing, it's been a great ride. More parts are to come and hopefully I can make part 8 tomorrow. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. When I talk all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Both fighters stare down their opponent, but Deku is too filled with rage to wait any longer. He runs at All Might and Bakugo takes flight. Deku leaps in with a kick and actually lands it before flipping off. Bakugo swivels down with a heel kick and chips right at All Might's jaw. As he falls, he lands an explosive one for all strike directly on All Might's neck. It's actually knocks him back, then Deku follows with two more strikes right to All Might's gut. Bakugo, with his unbusted arm, runs in with a tight and glowing fist. Deku also controls electricity with the slither of rationality as remaining, and they both rush at All Might. They become blurs for the cameras looking at them, and Deku is clearly faster than his rival. They both punch at All Might, but he catches both fists with ease. The impact shakes All Might's entire body and forces him to plant his feet quite hard for his standards. Impressive boys, however, it's time I show you what I can really do. He swings Deku around and throws him to the ground. Your HP has reached dangerously low levels. Get to safety and recover immediately. Emergency shield is being provided. Healing electricity is now circulating within the blood. Deku cloaks in a blue electrical ball as his eyes finally close. Bakugo, however, tries to keep on fighting with just his legs. Both of his arms are busted and Deku isn't there to try and heal them. He is really in a sticky situation at this point. All Might grabs one of his sluggish kicks and slams him on his red arm. He screams out in pain and actually passes out shortly after. The sight ahead of the strongest hero is frightening. There isn't much blood but these fighters went to their limits to face him and they got messed up badly. He doesn't know if he should be concerned or proud. Nevertheless, these two have grown into powerful heroes. When he wakes up, he receives a new notification. Your HP has been mostly restored. HP 80. At the shopping mall, Deku is just looking around for supplements like creatine and other things in the stalls, mainly just things to help him with his bulking at the moment. Out of nowhere, a hooded man asks him for an autograph. However, he seems terribly off to Deku. He doesn't show his face and he just goes for Deku's neck with four fingers. Due to Deku's more experienced battle skills, he slips past the swing and smartly steps away. You, Deku exclaims, clenching his fists. Don't make a scene, Deku thought, and he jabs his arm out, trying to disintegrate Deku, but he slips past it and strikes him in the sternum, then left rib area. He jumps up slightly and powerfully kicks him away with a kick to the chest. He lands and makes a stance, preparing for battle. Shigaraki isn't the most athletic of people, so these two hits shake him up a lot. These punches are on around the same level as an elite trained heavyweight boxer of our world, so it is truly something you don't want to get hit by. He quickly retreats and backs off, leaving Deku alone. The group gets to go on the Forest Lodge trip and meet the Pussycats. Once the group fall into the woods below to get to the lodge, the four fighters shine. Deku, Todoroki, Bakugo and Tenya race throughout the forest, desperately trying to overtake each other. Tenya's superhuman acceleration puts him ahead of everyone else at the start, but Deku takes that lead and is closely followed by Todoroki with his swift ice. Bakugo uses his agility with his explosions and flights to soar throughout the forest. Deku ends up getting the win, but expends the most energy out of the group. Once they arrive there, they begin training their quirks as in canon. While Bakugo is trying to flush one flaw into his whole body at once, Deku is practicing with his new electrical ability and also holding static charge for longer. Tagu then confronts him and orders for him to come at him. Deku engulfs in a thick electrical aura then begins controlling electricity into his right arm. He beams towards Tiger and throws a powerful punch. Such punch is way more than Deku's canon 5% Detroit smash and is also far more than Tiger could have imagined. He does block but actually slides back a little. Deku then front flips and slams the ground with a heel kick. He quickly looks back up to continue the current battle. He begins using iron side fist and swings wildly. Tiger easily swerves past his attack and lands a perfectly timed kick, launching Deku several meters away. He rolls and rolls before falling out of static charge. How could he be so strong? His stomach feels like it's exploded and he can barely catch his breath back. Tiger walks up to him and says, you are quite the impressive hero, now get back to work. The group get to eat and have an event with 1B, the test of courage, which is really just a test to see how many people scare people from the other class. 1A starts as the scarers in 1B as of people being scared. The event seems fine to start off, however the separate villains start to attack the students. Spinner eventually confronts Deku, Tenya and others, but Deku decides to stay. He knows where Kota is and decides to go to that area. Once he does, he comes in just in time to save Kota from a vicious strike. Deku rolls around violently and deactivates Static Charge. 
Who are you? Deku says, retrieving his maul from the inventory. Me? I'm muscular. The last villain you'll ever see. He says arrogantly, ripping off the cloak from his body. New quest, muscular. Survive against muscular, the most dangerous hero you'll ever face. Use every trick that you have up your sleeve and save your life as well as Kotus. Quest rewards, one minute equals 50 XP, three minutes equals 150 XP, 500 XP. Luckily, Deku has 20 more XP until level eight. Maybe he can get even more rewards to face this fearsome, intimidating villain. Muscular mass is created across both of the arms of Muscular and Deku controls electricity into the head of his maul. He begins using static charge and doesn't just rush into battle. One strike from those powerful arms could leave him down for the count if he isn't careful. Muscular takes the initiative and goes right in to try and land a punch. Deku slips with perfect technique and leaps into the air. He also uses Mjolnir's strike and leaves a trail of electricity behind him. He lands it directly on his head and actually cracks his skull. However, he is grabbed and viciously hurled into a nearby wall. Once he lands, he heavily strains his arm and drops to one knee. I need to heal this and fight at the same time, he complains, while looking down at his bruised tricep. Electricity trickles down such injured arm and he weaves past the hook for muscular. He steps back several times and holds up a one-arm guard. You think that weak stance will stop me, boy? Muscular asks loudly, rushing in for another attack. Deku is currently holding his maul with the injured arm, but then muscular is blocked by a batch of notifications. Plus 100 XP, level up, plus one to all physical stats, plus one strength. Deku physically feels the maul in his hand get lighter as the system grants him with even more power. Muscular mercilessly slams down with all his force and weight, the ground below cracks and destroys, but Deku just about manages to swerve out of the way of the incoming attack. Deku swings his maul at Muscular, but the impact force just decays through his tough muscular mass. The sight is shocking and makes the electrical hero terrified. Many fall instantly from his maul strikes, or at least fall back a little. Instead, their hammer vibrated backwards and caused no damage whatsoever. Muscular reaches out and grabs the head of the weapon. He raises up to his feet and squeezes, destroying the head and throwing it to the side. No! Deku blurts out, watching this happen in front of his very eyes. He is kneed in the stomach, then hucked straight onto the ground. You have been inflicted with severe blunt damage, minus 50 HP. He spits out blood onto the coarse rocky ground below before stepping up to his feet once again. The look in his eyes is one that shows no fear, although he can barely keep himself still with fear. Deku raises his arms and blocks an incoming punch, breaking his arm in the process. You have been inflicted with a bone break and moderate blunt damage, minus 40 HP. His forearm drops down in an awkward position and pulls on his loose skin. The feeling is almost unbearable and he drops to one knee. Muscular grows even more muscular mass across his body, now including his chest and back, before advancing towards his smaller opponents. He strikes down, but Deku just about swerves away, leading into a precise heel kick to his chin. He actually controls electricity into his leg and causes considerable damage for such a spontaneous and uncalculated attack. He rolls forward and leaps away, dodging a swing from his villainous opponent. His bone fully heals and he is now able to fight quite a lot better. An unperceived event in his brawl is that Kota is actually nowhere to be seen. Muscular has been so invested in the now more powerful Deku that he lost his focus on his main target. Plus 100 XP. Deku continues fighting and just manages to keep himself staying on his feet. He accumulates more and more damage, dropping his HP down to critical levels once again. The Viking instinct bubbles up in the electrical fighter. This time, Muscular is depicted as a large Jotun from the realm of Jotunheim. If you don't know what that is, it's best if you look it up. It's basically just a realm of giants from Norse mythology. This floods Deku with blinding rage and fury. Thor's rage activated. His strength stat increases past 40, making him way stronger than he's ever been before. Including the boost from his low HP, his strength is probably closer to 50. His muscles are much larger as well as toned. His vascularity has improved drastically and his eyes blaze a bright but cool blue. The pressure from his newly found power even makes Muscular think twice about just rushing right into blind combat with him. He looks back up at his opponent, clenching both fists tightly. His hair raises high as if he's using full cowl and muscular runs right at him. Every stride is hefty and can be felt in Deku's own legs. It's surprising for him, but easily something that he can handle. He leaps and punches Muscular's face before swiveling and heel kicking his chest. The strike is enough to knock Muscular off his feet and as he does this, Deku starts controlling the almost unstoppable energy. His arm glows in a bright current as he swerves his body in the direction of his opponent. His entire arm is filled with energy and is extremely vascular. The light emitted from his fist is bright and the rattling, crackling noise from his harsh electricity makes his attack even more fearsome. He lets out a loud scream, putting everything he can into this very last attack. His arm even leaves a strong trail of blue energy also. The strike is landed and he lands right on the dock, propelling Muscular airborne into a rock wall behind him hard. 
The impact force knocks him out, his arm is busted. It looks similar to what it looked like when he hit that zero point bar in the UA entrance exam. A good few seconds after this event takes place, his electricity heals his wounds slowly and returns his HP to about 70. Alongside this, his full consciousness is returned, putting him fully in the real world and it stops him seeing odd hallucinations. Whoa, I was so strong that I actually beat this guy? Quest complete, muscular, plus 650 XP, level up, plus 1 to all physical stats. He walks around the cluster of rocks and sees Kota hiding. He puts him on his back, then runs down the rocky hill, still healing his own wounds. Swiftly passing two villains, he notices claws coming right his way. Due to his increased perception and speed, he flips right out of the way. However, he blocks the second attack rashly. His arms bleed and he grunts on the pain of the rather deep cuts. You have been inflicted with moderate cutting damage, minus 30 HP. As he looks back up, he is shielded by the large four-armed 1A student, Dupli Arms. What's going on? He asks, being concerned. Dupli Arms steps back powerfully, resisting the Dark Shadow and says, Dark Shadow is out of control, he's attacking anybody, including us and even Fumikage. Deku knows he can save them with his electricity. He leaps directly off Dupli Arms' shoulders using Iron Side Fist. The bright light emitted from his hand almost immediately weakens Dark Shadow and returns Fumikage to his feet once again. Thank you, Fumikage murmurs, finally getting his breath back. Deku's iron side fist fades and Dark Shadow starts to power out of control once again. How am I supposed to keep it calm, Deku wonders, desperately trying to subdue the power of the Dark Force. I need to go and help Bakugo, I can't be stuck with this, he realises, getting deeper and deeper into the situation. In the last ditch effort, he throws a capsule of Bakugo's palm sweat on the ground. He releases sufficient light to suppress the overall power of Dark Shadow, then he rushes off into the distance to aid Bakugo. Deku arrives and sees several metal pole-like structures wedged into the ground. Above this, he sees a man solitarily standing above, attacking Deku and Todoroki while below. Metal, big mistake, Deku whispers to himself. He grabs two different poles and grips tightly. He controls electricity into his palms and forearms, flowing electricity right up the poles to the villain. He continues with this constant current and starts to hurt such villain. The teeth just start to fall back and Deku then starts cracking such remaining teeth. Bakugo looks around and is more than happy to see Deku, however he doesn't show that he's happy and just makes an awkward smile, looking back at the villain. With some new open area, he soars into the air and swivels down with a heel kick, followed by a one for all punch. The villain flies down from the skies and thumps to the ground hard. Bakugo lands gracefully and the big three of 1A band together in a line. We should be okay, Todoroki says calmly. The area is quiet, too quiet. Deku, while observing the surroundings, notices a villain approaching them. There, he shouts, activating static charge in the process. Deku retrieves another of Bakugo's capsules and Todoroki's left arm engulfs in harsh flames. With the excessive light in the area, Fumikage actually releases Dark Shadow to help him with the incoming confrontation. Dupli Arms also prepares himself and all five heroes stand against the fearsome villain. I can't just run into this fight, he could have a seriously sneaky quirk and doesn't seem to be the physical type of villain. Bakugo tries to run in but Deku stops him with just an arm alone. Bakugo is actually unable to move forward when Deku does this and his strength certainly surprises him. Even with the constant training against his rival, he never expected him to be this strong with just an outreached arm. He clearly wants you. Stay back, Hachan. Deku orders, not breaking contact with the masked villain. Bakugo scoffs and takes a step back, surprising the rest of the heroes since Bakugo never really listens to anyone. Mr. Compress drops to the ground and starts slowly approaching the group. You think this small team is enough to stop me? He asks curiously. Deku analyzes his movements and starts mumbling to himself. Why wouldn't he start walking up to us randomly? If he wanted to fight, he'd use some level of speed or athleticism. Does his quirk have some sort of range? He wonders, getting a few eyes from his surrounding teammates. Get back everyone! They walk back quickly, but then Mr. Compass runs towards them. Doors rage, activated. Deku speeds ahead and controls electricity into his right arm. The energy from the attack makes the punch superior to the punches created by Bakugo's 5% for choice smashes. He lands a strike to his chest and knocks him back several meters away. He quickly gets to healing his arm and Bakugo races to his side, preparing for battle. Where's your hammer already? Gone. Gone forever, Deku says, annoyed that he's restricted to his martial arts ability. Bakugo steps ahead of Deku and says, I can beat him. He slowly walks ahead, clenching his left fist for an attack. He places a small capsule in the middle of his palm and starts condensing his explosive energy into a single beam. AP shot! He releases a beam of explosions and the capsule explodes near Mr. Compress. Beam emits from Bakugo's palm and he says, good riddance. So that will conclude the seventh part of what if Deku had a stat leveling quirk. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this because I certainly enjoyed making it. If you want to see further parts of this what if then please subscribe and turn on post notifications. This will inform you when the next parts of these what ifs actually get put out. If there's anything you think I can improve on for this what if please put it in the comments so I can make this what if as great as possible. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.